Hi, I'm going to give you a tour of the biology labs at Red Deer College. These labs were renovated in 1999, and by renovated I mean completely gutted. We changed the structure. It used to be that they were biology labs in one hallway and chemistry on the other, and we decided to square things up. So what we ended up with, as you can see on this diagram here, is four labs with a prep area in the middle and a student lab across the hall. The labs have some specialization to them, and we're starting in the microbiology lab. So here's the micro lab. It has a U-shaped configuration, and as you can see, it has very good sight lines. Student lab benches are very wide, lots of room to work. On the side, we have biosafety cabinets, incubators, CO2 incubator, refrigerator, uh, microscopes in cupboards and on in carts, uh, supplies on the open shelves, uh, some tables where they could set out things, and then along the other side, more cupboards, top and bottom, clothes, glassed in on the top, and closed on the bottom, and long prep areas along the side. The student benches are at standing height, and then we have adjustable stools where they can sit if they choose or stand. In the middle we have tables that can be moved out so we can use these for the students to work at, we can use them to put uh, materials on, they can do demos there, instructors can do demos there, or we can take them right out and you have a big wide open space. So what's nice about these rooms are that they're wide open, easy to move around in, nice wide <coughs> uh, aisleways and um, easy egress in all areas, nice sight lines. We have uh, an area at the back of the room where they come in by the door where students hang up their coats and can leave their backpacks. And because it's a micro lab, we also have coat hangers here for them to hang their lab coats on. They're not there right now because they're being used, but normally they would stay in this lab or one of the other labs. They wouldn't leave the area. The bench tops are uh, epoxy resin, solid black, um, and have stood up very well. They're heat resistant and chemical resistant, and they'll outlast all of us, I'm sure. We went with wood benches because they were manufactured locally, so we could get them um, made and installed to our own specifications and done fairly quickly. And the flooring is a solid, uh, flooring, laminate type, or linoleum type flooring, sorry, and it has welded seams, and so we don't have any worries about water leakage or anything like that. I'm going to walk through to the, this is the connecting equipment room, so there's a fridge in here, a fume hood in here, and the autoclave. The flooring in here is an epoxy resin um, waterproof material that is very water res resistant and has a big drain and then there's just room for some storage for stuff. Walking into the prep area where you can see we have lots of open shelving and then cupboards down below that are closed in for things that need to be kept dust free and a lot of view, work area in the middle, and work areas on the side. We're walking into the next lab that's beside it. This lab is more of a traditional style with the three linear benches. You can see the walkways are quite a bit tighter here. So this one's not quite as good for student work. There isn't an area where they can kind of push things aside and, and work in groups. They have to work sort of side by side here. At the back of the room there are more cupboards and you'll see the big silver pipes at the back of the room. They are the duct system for our Genere system. So when we do dissections, the students place their trays in front of these bench top vents and they're quite powerful and they pull the air across the top of the specimen and out. And so you don't have to worry about hoods being down in your way and ruining sight lines and things like that. 
And so they're strategically placed along the bench for the students to um, work in pairs usually. This room holds 30 students. The last room that I showed you held 28 students. And then I'm just going to walk through the door into the flex lab. And the flex lab is the U shape again with the bench at the back and the bench is on the sides. Holds 28 students. And what's unique about it is that it was set up that it could be either a chemistry, biochemistry lab, or a biology lab. So there are two fume hoods in this room. And there is a safety shower and an eye wash station on top of the other safety equipment that we have in the other labs. And there's the instructor bench at the front with all the tools that they require. Data projector, computer, VoIP phone. One of the features that we really work hard at having was lots of prep space on the sides where you can put equipment, move equipment in and out of. Now we have some equipment that is used jointly between chemistry and biology and it's stored in the water room we call it and the equipment room. So in this room we have the water treatment, the water treatment for our DI water and the steam generator and then some more water treatment, water softening equipment. And then we have our low temperature freezer, our high speed centrifuges, our GCs, drying ovens, things like that, an AA, and our uh, gene sequencer are all in this room. We go from that room back into the prep area, and this is more the storage part of the prep area, and the chemical storage. We have flammable cabinets that are vented to the outside, and then our gray storage on this side of the room, and our uh, oxidizers on this side. And this room has a, a lock that only the techs are able to open or close, and so everything's kept quite secure in there. And the last lab that we have, walking through to that room, is the anatomy and physiology zoology room. So again we have the gen air system but in this case it's in the room that's in a U shape with the ducts at the back of the room again so that the sight lines are not impaired by anyone and then work area in the middle, cabinets along the back and the sides for storage. And then on this side there weren't any cabinets put up because we had the big tall anatomical models to store so they just sit on the countertop there. So in this room we what you see on the side those cabinets with the glass doors were actually recycled from our original space. They were in perfectly good shape so we decided to use them again rather than throwing them away and having new ones built. That was a way to save money. Uh, in terms of colors we went with very neutral colors in the rooms. There's kind of a, a beige wood top. It was a, that was left from the original uh, built in the 70s. It was dark brown stained wood and they painted it this lighter brown. It gives it some character so you're not just looking at cinder block and concrete all the time. And then half tone beige walls. So very neutral but pleasant space to work in. What we're going to go into is the student lab. So this is a standalone lab that the students can work in on their own. They sign out a key from the commissioner of security and then they are registered that they're in here and they come down and work in here. So right now our students are working on their fly projects, genetics, and so they have access to CO2 for anesthetizing them. And then all the setups are in here. There's microscopes in here. Uh, students from anatomy and physiology can come in and work on their specimens and they use these hoods. And there's some other pieces of equipment in here, some chemistry things that they can do if they have to finish up just doing a melting point or weighing out something, they can do that in here. There's an incubator in here, there's a fridge in here, there's some storage space in here. And then there's some 
coaches in here and some textbooks where they can sit and relax and do some reading or work on some projects with their students because there's some benches in the middle as well. And that concludes my tour.